Hi folks, in my last video I unboxed this grey kitten on the left. It's a Moose Toys little live pets kitten. They actually, both these models are the same kitten just with different fur. And I got this kitten for just £8.98 from eBay second hand. It was sold as fully working, but it did have this problem. So the cat on the right, the tail is moving correctly, but the grey cat couldn't get any response at all. So the tail was completely broken. And on further investigation, we could see why the piece of plastic in the mechanism that goes in the tail was completely snapped. And I took the full piece of plastic out here so you can see what it looks like. So we need to replace this. So Paul measured the diameter and it was three millimetres. So Paul suggested getting some strimmer line of the same diameter and that's what we did. So in order to access the tail mechanism, the kitten needs to be stripped down. You need to take all the fur off and then take the main body part apart to get the tail mechanism out. So that's what we did. So here's the cat before I started taking the fur off. It was really, really well put together, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah, great attention to detail on the uh, electrical items and the uh, stitching on the stuffing as well. The stitching was really, really strong. And I had to use a combination of scissors and uh, a seam ripper. So, this is the back leg that has the on, off and try me switch on. It has foam underneath the fur and then the fur is actually sewn onto the foam. Right. So I had to use a, a seam ripper this, this, with this bit to get the foam off from the fur. So this is the back leg with the uh, wires in for the on, off and try me. So I unpicked that and then I unpicked the other back leg. That one just had the batteries in, so just mm -hmm. a black wire and a red wire. And then I removed the fur from the back. So you can see the um, touch sensor there mm. that's uh, on the back, stitched on again. It was like putting some sort of gauzy type stuff and then mm. that was stitched mm. onto the fur. So I removed that. Uh, it was so well stitched on, I just cut the <laughs> bit of fur off in the end because it was so hard to take it off. And this was interesting. The front leg looks like it's uh, a reset. Yeah, it's got a switch in it, hasn't it? Yeah, so I, I was really surprised when I saw those wires in um, because obviously the front leg you don't do anything with and it, and it had that slot, so yeah, it's a reset. But you said there's no mention of it in the manual, so it, no, it, it looks no... like it's just a factory reset, not something that would be used yeah, in, in the factory. Yeah, so that was a surprise. This is a shot of the model showing what was in the two back legs, where you put the batteries. There's two AAA cells in each leg. Yeah, the one on the left, that just had batteries in. I said it was a black and... Uh, a red wire, it was actually a black and a blue wire for some reason. That's the one on the right, isn't it? Oh, sorry, um, the one on the right, yes. And the one on the left is the one with the three position switch. Mm. So that's obviously got more wires because you've got like the try me function mm -hmm. as well as, as the on, so. And the off. And the off. Yeah. So we've got more wires coming from that. 
So in the front leg, rather than foam, we had this little bean bag, which is odd. It's got like little, little plastic uh, round beads in it. I don't know why they did that with the front legs. And that, what I'm showing on the screen there, is the reset, the reset oh, pour yeah. with the little hole mm -hmm. in the front. So you think that they've put the little bean bags in the front legs to weight them a bit? Yeah, to make them, uh, to stop them feeling too too light, too, light. too different from the rear ones, too, seeing as they yeah. have the batteries in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's probably why they did it, Paul. And then they did the same with the other front leg. This one hasn't got any wires in it because there's nothing at all in, in that leg. Um, no electrical components. So they had a bean bag in the other front leg. So this shot is showing uh, what it looks like when all the fur is removed from the body and all four legs. So that's what you've got left. Then in this next shot, um, I've got the fur pulled back um, off the head and it's only attached at this point with um, stitching to two plastic strips where the eyes are. I took that last little bit of stitching off that was attaching the last piece to the strips around the eyes. And so here is the model with all the fur taken off it. These grey strips here is what it is how the fur is attached it's actually sewn to these gray plastic strips and on the body as well so you were quite impressed with these weren't you paul yeah they're very high quality little connectors you don't normally find them in toys that's such good quality they're all color connect color coded coded mm -hmm. yeah they're all color coded Next step was to take the screws out and lift the top part of the casing off the bottom half of the casing so that we could get access to the tail mechanism. Because the tail mechanism is basically uh, a gearbox, and a motor in a gearbox. Yeah, it's a geared down, um, geared down motor. Mm. At this point, we could extract... Mm -hmm. Lift the tail mechanism out. Yeah. You unscrewed the screws. So removing the top of the motor where the final geared down drive is attached to the tail because we want access to the broken part of the tail there. Yes, so now we can see the broken part and you've lifted that out. Mm -hmm. So what is this actually consisting of here, Paul? Well, it's got a gear uh, and then the, the tail bit, which it's been held by, is, you can see the pin mm. that holds it, the tail's pin to the gear. So Are we, you taking the gear off at this point? The gear and a bit that plugs into it, uh, which the tail is attached to, and it, it pulls out of the gear, but now we have to separate the tail from this like bit that plugs into the gear. It's like a... It's like a, a, a sort of... A uh, cube shape, isn't it? Yeah. That locks into the gear. Mm, like a key. Mm. Yeah, like so a key. So when the gear turns, the tail turns. Mm. So to extract this, you've got to knock the little pin out of it. Yeah, there's a steel pin holding holding the tail in. And uh, you can see here now I'm going to uh, use a punch and a hammer to drive that steel pin out. So just tap the, uh, tap the punch and hopefully drive the pin out which is quite a tight fit. Mm. So once the pin's out, the tail itself will unplug from there. And you can see that tail has got like a, a squared end. Yes. So now you've got you've got the uh, strimmer line mm -hmm. and you've got to try and form that same yeah, so sort of cube on the end. Yeah, the only way I could think of was to sort of melt the end of the strimmer line, which is made of nylon, so it's quite high temperature it requires to melt it, and uh, form a blob on there. Um, and once that blob's formed, um, we can, and it's cooled down, we can then uh, use that... Shape it. Shape it, yeah. 
It's got to cool let it cool down. It cools cool quickly. Woo, there it goes. So yeah, that, that's that multi blob on the end. So we just roughly now grind it into shape, uh, into a rough cube, which is still too big. Mm -hmm. uh, quite fiddly to do, but uh, you can see there's a rough sort of cube shape on there now. Yes. Very rough. Yeah. Uh, way too big. So the next the, thing you the did thing was to do was to finish well, it off last by thing hand. You did was yeah. Yeah, finish sand it, it. Finish it off by hand by on, a, on some wet and dry sandpaper to get a cube shape like the original, which will plug back into that uh, little gear which joins it to uh, the main gear. So that's the original, that's the original broken yeah. tail with a cube on. Hey, this is there's ours. the one you've made. It's a bit melted, uh, a bit scorched, but it, it's it works. It's the right shape and you can see mm, now... You did lock it in. It pushes in, that nylon yeah. piece of line with a squared end will push in there. Uh -huh. uh, so all that remains is now to drill a hole um, For the pin through the original in. hole of the white bit and, and drive the pin back in. So you use the pillar drill with this tiny drill bit in for yes. accuracy to get it completely straight. That's right. And then you put the small piece of metal back in, mm -hmm. metal pin. Drove the pin back through uh, assembly to fix it all together. There it is finished. And that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Neat job, Paul. Yeah, let's hope it's strong enough. Okay, so then you uh, put the gear back on. Mm -hmm. And then you opened up the gearbox for the tail. Mm, put the tail assembly back into the gearbox. And uh, screwed it all back together again. And then you switched it on. And we tried it out. <laughs> so it works quite well. So you put it, uh, you put the gearbox back in the main body now, mm. and it was very loud in there, like um, there was some sort of vibration mm -hmm. when it was in the body. Mm -hmm. If you put that gearbox in some casing that you 3D print, mm, back in, yeah. Would it uh, still vibrate? Do you think or well, not? Well, what's happening is the uh, <clears throat> the gearbox and the motor. It makes it makes some noise and there is some vibration in it, but it, you don't hear it um, particularly loudly when it's like this. But when uh -huh. you when you put it back onto into a case, the yeah. the case amplifies the vibration because uh -huh. the case vibrates. So what could could we maybe put some stuffing around it or something like that <clears throat> to make it quieter? Uh, yeah, well, you could mount it in rubber bushes or you could make sure that the uh, gearbox and motor was actually not connected to the main body. Well, uh, that's what I want because I'm going to make a new body for this, folks, but I'm going to make it like a full-size cat because at the moment you can probably see the head is massive compared to the body, body and I want to make it more proportionate. So I do want it separate. So yeah, if it's separate, then it won't make a noise. You won't hear the vibration. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not sure about how long we're going to make this tail yet. Uh, until... No, that was the original one, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, I did want it a little bit longer than the original because I'm making a bigger body. Um, but we'll have to experiment with that when I put the fur on and yeah. see what mm -hmm. looks best. Mm -hmm. So that's it for this video, folks. In the next video, I'm going to be referring this cat, starting with the head. But that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, as always, and see you next time.